Good morning. Welcome to the lecture 3 of the second week of this ongoing online course on engineering or architectural graphics part 2. And in this course we are discussing about isometric projections and by this time by this lecture we have already discussed about the fundamentals of isometric projections, the isometric scales and we have also seen what will be the isometric projection for different 2D objects, 3D objects, 3D solids but all of these have been the regular ones and complete solids. Now in today's lecture since all the fundamentals are very well in place and we have also discussed a large variety of 3D solids. Today we will be discussing about isometric projections of frustums of cones and pyramids. Now we already know about what a frustum is. So a frustum basically is a part of the cone such that the top portion the apex portion of the cone has been chipped off. That is what the frustum of a cone is and the pyramid is also the same. Now what happens in a frustum? Let us understand that first. So what happens in a frustum is wherever it is cut from we will see a shape similar to that of the base but slightly shrunk in size depending upon where it is being cut. So if it is cut closer to the apex we will see a smaller shape similar to that of the base because it is a regular right angled cone from which this frustum has been cut. So wherever it is cut we will see these different sizes of in this case in this case circles. So we have a bigger circle in the base at the top of the frustum we will see a smaller circle and like that. So this is what a frustum is and which is what we are going to draw. Now let us understand when we are going to draw the orthograph sorry isometric projection of of this frustum what all are we going to see. So if we were to draw the isometric projection of the cone what were we drawing? We were drawing the base circle and we were assigned ascertaining where this apex is going to come. Now here the apex is not there anymore all we have is one base circle one smaller circle at the top of the frustum and rest of the curved surface which is which is joining this entire these two bases which is what we are going to draw and the fundamental remains the same the process remains the same as that of drawing the reference rectangles or polygons which are enclosing it and then arriving at the other dimensions this is what we are going to do. So let us see how do we do it here today in case of the frustums. Okay. So this is a simple frustum which is kept in HP which is resting in HP and it has its axis perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. Before I do this I will draw this axis. Okay. This will help us in understanding the position of the of the frustum. Now the first thing we have to draw is this bottom base. So we just draw this reference ok. Now in relation to this x y we can draw this base I am enlarging it slightly so that we are able to understand it better. So we draw it just the same way we have been doing so far for circles this is the, the base of the cone. Now we can actually mark the apex or we may not mark the apex but it is, it is not necessary to mark the apex here. Now what we have is we have a plane where this circle will come ok. So in the base we can actually have this, this circle. The, the square which is enclosing this circle on the top of this frustum. But this square is actually not at the ground it is at a certain certain height. Now what we can actually do is we can have this square created at this height. So we know what this height is but where do we measure it from. So we can actually have 
the square in reference to the square which we made outside. So, suppose this was the smaller square which is what we will get from here. So, what is this distance? We will measure that and we will make this smaller square in the base here very light and then we will raise it to whatever height this frustum has. So, suppose this is the height that the frustum is having 4 units. Okay. So, we will just take this smaller square to the to the top and now we will do the same thing we will make this we will make the circle right this is what the top circle is where it has to be because this is exactly where it will come in the in the bottom in the top view we just projected it up giving it certain height the height will come from here okay we make another one and now we will just join it tangentially just as we do for all other solids and this is how your frustum will look like so in the top we will be seeing this entire ellipse clearly we will be seeing this slant straight edge and in between we will see this dotted line which is going at the back. This is the frustum which we are seeing here. This is the isometric projection of the frustum which we were seeing. So, I will just remove these lines because they are distracting us. So, it is very easy the fundamental process the basic process remains the same we are just identifying these reference squares in relation to x y the heights. So, essentially what we are doing is we are identifying we are ascertaining what is the x y and z coordinate of each point whatever point we are concerned with right. So, this is what we are doing and once we have that. So, we had that for the top square, we have that for the bottom square and this is how we ascertain where this these two circles, these two circles are going to come and once we have those circles in place in isometric, we will just connect those edges because these are non isometric, these are not isometric lines, but this circle is that is also not isometric. But it is contained in a reference plane which can be derived because this is uh, framed of isometric lines. That is how we will derive the isometric projection of a frustum, frustum of a cone. We can do exactly the same thing for a pyramid, frustum of a pyramid. Let us see this, this is a pentagonal pyramid and it is cut here. This is what we are going to see, we will do exactly the same thing repeat the process and let us see if you can repeat this process at your end. I am just drawing this reference because it is it makes us view this in a better manner. Okay. So, we have this pentagon. So, we will enclose this in a rectangle okay. and we will first draw this rectangle. So, we will draw this rectangle here. It is looking like a square, I am making it a square, but actually this may not be a square, but so when you draw it actually using proper stationary tools, you will arrive at the exact projections and not like how I am drawing freehand. So, I am just assuming that this is how it is going to be. So, what I have done is I have drawn the base pentagon for this frustum. Now, we will do the top pentagon of this frustum. I have again arrived at a reference rectangle okay. and now we know that where this one is going to be. Okay. So, say approximately this is where the top frustum is going to going to come sorry the top 
pentagon ok. And now again the same thing so we know the height what it has and we also know that this height is falling on uh, or is parallel to one of the axis in isometric projections. So, we will just take it up to whatever height is given. We arrive at this right. So, this is what we will we will do. So, this is the top one. Now, I will again make this pentagon here. So, on this rectangle you can get these 5 points of this top pentagon. Now, what we have is a top pentagon which is apparently a regular pentagon and what you will see again these fundamentals repeating themselves. Now, you will see this line is parallel to this. So, if we were to check we will see that this should come parallel to this, this edge should come parallel to this. It might not really be coming out like this here, but it will if you draw properly you will actually get it and this is going to be parallel to this. So, all the parallel sides all the parallel lines in the object will actually appear to be parallel here and then what we have to do is join these points. So, we just join these points which are joined in the actual object and this one is going to be at the back. This is what your final object is going to be. I will just darken it here, change the color and give you a final object. So, this is what your final object is going to be. A pentagon, a regular pentagon in the top, a regular pentagon in the bottom and then we have these slant edges some of the part of this pentagon will actually be hidden behind and we will not be able to see it which is what is here this is how the frustum of this pentagon pentagonal pyramid in question looks like ok. So, the steps remain simple and in fact if you have arrived at the correct orthographic projection it is very very easy to draw the isometric projection of any object literally any object in any complicated position that it may be. The only thing we are doing with the help of these reference rectangles is we are determining the position the coordinates x, y and z coordinates of each of these points. So, if we know what these coordinates are probably we can very easily arrive at the final object. This is how we are going to arrive at isometric projections of any frustum or any 3D object for that matter ok. So, we will look at one more example I am going to show you uh, several examples here. Uh, so, that it is easier for you to perceive things you will understand how isometric projections are going to be drawn for these objects. However, I cannot possibly cover all the variety the entire variety of the objects here you will have to practice on your own look at several examples which you can possibly have and then convert all of them in from orthographic projection to isometric projection. But before we learn isometric projection understanding orthographic projection is a must you must go through orthographic projections thoroughly you must be thorough with orthographic projections only then can you convert them into isometric projection ok. So, this is again the same thing they have already made these reference rectangles here I will quickly start making the the frustum here. So, what we have is this approximately this is a hexagon. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this is what we have in the base and then we have an another rectangle which is inside 
of this rectangle which we just made and we have the same six points. This is what the inner one is going to be. So, this is the hexagon which we get in the bottom and this is the one which is going to enclose the hexagon which is going to appear at the top and this is the height. So, we know this height. So, all we have to do is take this height up whatever height it is. I might not be taking the same one here, but when you measure it properly you will be taking it. Okay. So, this is the reference plane that we are talking about and we can take the same points up. Okay. This is what it is okay. and this is the hexagon in the in the bottom. Now, all we have to do is join these these slant edges and this is this is here. Now, it will become clearer even I darken it. So, this is what you are going to see in the top. This is what we see in the bottom not everything will become visible from the front and then these are the slant edges which join the top hexagon to the bottom hexagon. Okay. And then this is the slant edge which is hidden and this part of the base as well. So, this is the frustum of this is the isometric projection of this frustum hexagonal pyramid. Okay. Now, it was very simple if both the planes the plane which was cutting the pyramid was parallel to the to the base it was very easy to arrive at this top hexagon because then we know that okay, it is exactly going to be above it vertically we can just take the heights and that is how we would have done. Now, what happens in case we have an inclined plane which is cutting it. So, it is not a regular frustum, but it is a part of this cone. It is still a frustum, but the plane which is cutting the cone or whatever pyramid is not parallel to the base. Now, in that case we will exactly start and have the same process which we have been doing so far. Okay. So, let us see how do we do it. We follow the same steps. So, how do we start? We will start with the drawing of the bottom circle the base of the cone. Okay. So, we have this I will draw it here. So, I am drawing it slightly scaled up. Okay. So, you arrive at the centers for these curves Okay. So, this is the base of this this frustum. Now, we have to arrive at what happens here at the top. Okay. So, what we will do is now we actually have an ellipse here right which you can see here. So, what I will draw is I will draw a reference rectangle again. So, we draw this reference rectangle okay. and in the top this line is also enclosed in a rectangle. Now, we know that this is actually an inclined plane which is what we are looking at. Where is it coming is what we will determine from here. So, if I draw this rectangle exactly what we are getting here in the in the base. So, what we will do is so approximately like this. So, I am just doing it ok. So, approximately this is how this is where the bottom one is going to come and now if I 
take it in the height now if you look at this one okay there is a certain height to it so this rectangle is not coming right here this rectangle is starting at a certain height so say it is starting at this height okay so i will first raise this entire rectangle in the plan this one to a certain height okay so this is what this height is so this is how you are going to get this this plane where we will so this uh, this particular uh, rectangle has been transferred at this height which is this height and now we will have our rectangle which we are talking about okay so another one at the top and our slant plane is actually this so this is the slant plane where this this particular shape which is actually going to be an ellipse is going to come now how will we determine that which are these points which are coming here where should they come so again the same thing we can actually so what we have done here is that we have just divided this in using horizontal lines and these vertical lines and what we are going to do here is just take their heights and relative position on this one so if we mark again so if i just mark this like uh, this is divided into three equal parts say like this okay and this one horizontally okay and now from this or this we can take these heights okay so this is this is for each of the points so it, this particular point which is here is coming here which is at the top of this now the other one this one at the bottom is is here we know that the one which is which is here which is this is at a certain height okay so is already at a certain drop so if i take it here this is the point where we are going to get right this is this is actually in this plane it might not be appearing that but it is on that plane this second point is at another height which is this so we drop it further so we have it somewhere here like this so what you will get once you get all of them put together you will actually get this distorted ellipse here okay this is the plane which we are seeing from here this is this is reduced in size this is this is an ellipse and now what we will do is we will join these points okay so if i darken it now if i change the color what you have is something like this it might not be the exact one but something like this and you can very clearly see that this is the frustum of a cone which has been cut by a plane which is actually inclined all i am doing here we are going to do here is we are just arriving at each of these points depending upon how complex the problem is we are going to get the projections the coordinates of each of these points in x y and z and we will we will try to plot it here this is what we've been doing and this is how any problem can be solved so i'm just showing you several examples you can practice more and more so this was a frustum of cone which was uh, cut by an inclined plane this is another one we we will exactly do the same thing the only thing being that this one in the bottom this base in the bottom is also getting cut but here instead of unlike the previous ones we will actually be starting with a with a complete cone because here we can actually see that there is an apex and if you know you would if you know orthographic projections you already know that the true shape of this one is actually a triangle so this is a flat plane this is unlike uh, other shapes uh, so uh, 
this is a simple triangle this is not an ellipse this is not a distorted curved shape this is a simple triangle and all we have to do is arrive at these points and we can make it simply let us see how do we do that so the first thing that we are going to do is make this circle in the base ok so let us make the circle in the base I am drawing it freehand without even locating the centers, but I am sure you are not going to do that when you ok. So, this is the base ok. Now, what we have to do is ok, we have to first locate the apex. So, for example, this is the apex. Now, we do not need to draw these lines, but I am just drawing it to give you a glimpse of how this cone was ok. So, this is how we would see the cone appearing in isometric of course, this is going to be lighter. Now, we have to arrive at these points ok. So, if we had this square which was enclosing the circle here right. Now, we have to arrive at this line ok. So, what we can actually do is at this distance whatever this distance is we can pass a line. Now, wherever this line intersects the curve these two points are the points where the straight line intersects this circle and these two are also the points where we are going to see our triangle the triangular plane. Now, if you look at it, it might be a different point, but it appears that this is the same point. So, I will assume that this is the same point and I will just join this and the other side of the triangle is arrived at by joining this apex to this and then this is the third side and the rest of it, the rest of the cone remains the same, we are not changing it. So, this is where this is the sectional surface this is where the section of the surface is coming and if you can see this is a triangular plane which is what you can arrive at when you are drawing the true shape of the section. Now, I will just change the color and you can see how the final object will look like. So, we will actually be seeing this triangle which is getting cut which is the surface which we arrive at and then at the back we have the remaining part of the cone coming. This is all coming in dotted. So, you can see very simply if you have the correct orthographic projection here you can very easily convert it into isometric. In fact, drawing isometric is much simpler if the dimensions are in place. So, this is one of those conditions where the cone is being cut, but so, it is not a frustum here we are not talking about frustum, but we are talking about the section of cone which is what we have we have just seen here. Let us look at one more example of this frustum where we do not have a, a cone we have a triangular pyramid ok a triangular base pyramid. Now, this pyramid is getting cut by a by a plane an inclined plane ok. And this is the kind of shape that we will see when seen from the top which is actually not the true shape of the section because we know that we are not viewing it parallel or sorry perpendicular to this to the inclination of this plane ok. So, what we are going to do here is again repeat the same process. So, I am going to first mark this triangle in the base ok. So, this is the original triangle in the base ok. Now, where is the apex going to be? So, we will locate this point and we will locate this point we have the distance. So, we can actually take the distance and we can locate this point. This is where, so this is actually the projection of this apex in the bottom in the base and we will decide where this apex is going to be. So, we decide upon the apex say here and 
if it was original this would have actually looked like this right this is what it is but it is getting cut so what we know is that these are the three edges the slant edges which are getting cut and we can actually look at their uh, locate their projections so what we know is that this point d which is here so we can actually know its projections we know its height right so the x distance so we know what this distance is we know what this distance is and then we know what this distance is so z x so y and x and then this is the point where this slant surface is going to cut similarly we will arrive at this e it is at a certain height so we know what this distance is we know what this distance is say approximately this and then we know what this distance is and we will arrive at this point similarly we will arrive at f by knowing this distance so we know this distance here and we would know the height of f here so this is where this is going to come and now we can just join these three points and you will arrive at the the section so this is what you will see as the remaining portion of this pyramid which is being cut again by an inclined plane and this edge actually goes as dotted one we will not be seeing it so this is what you will see if this is the orthographic projection given there could be several several other problems several conditions in which they are being cut they are being placed they may be perpendicular to the vp or whichever way we can arrive at them but the prerequisite being the orthographic projections should be in place so i'll stop here this is what we would uh, we would we have discussed in frustum of cones and pyramids we will take up another type of solid for the next lecture i hope you are able to follow the fundamentals and you are grasping it well practicing at home and i'm waiting for your queries please write to us with queries and doubts and we will resolve them thank you very much for joining me today bye bye